So let's take a look at our Zen server environment. We have two servers and we have a 2008 R2 server. It is activated and it is on the wire. So let's go ahead and set these up in the backup wizard and we're going to go ahead and back up our 2008 R2 server and we'll do a restore. We have to define the Zen servers themselves and when we create them we'll go ahead and set them up as the Citrix Zen server and you'll notice that immediately we get an extra tab. That extra tab will allow us to authenticate into the server without us having to add an additional agent. So we're going to do this no agents. We're not going to do any modifications to the actual boxes themselves. We're just going to manage this all through the backup wizard. So let's go ahead and create both of our hosts. So we're going to create another new client. We're going to go ahead and define that again as a Citrix Zen server. And on our Zen server we're going to go ahead and set up authentication. So we'll authenticate as our backup user. In this case we're just going to use root, define our password, and then we have to define a data mover. The data mover can be any backup agent on the wire that's available to us, but in this case we're going to select the backup server itself. We will go back, define the actual host name for the client, that way we have communication. We're going to use DNS to talk to it, so DNS definitely needs to be available in the network for this to work. And let's do a new backup. So we'll do a new backup and we're going to backup a Citrix Zen server guest. So the guest name is win2k8r2. You'll see it enumerates all of our guests, but we're just going to backup the one and we'll go ahead and create that and start a backup. So we'll do an immediate start and get this guy rolling. When we set him up, we definitely want to create a full backup and create a cold backup. By creating a cold backup, we are telling it that we want it to grab the memory state. So instead of just doing a regular snapshot, it's going to grab the system and the memory state we did choose a larger disk pool and we'll go ahead and start the backup. So immediate start will go ahead and launch the backup job and you'll notice immediately that it's going to go grab a memory state. So it pauses the system, not taking a snapshot right now because we're grabbing the memory state, but during a memory state grab we do have a minimal amount of time where it's not going to actually have access for people to be able to do updates. So we're not going to be able to do changes here at this point, but we are doing a backup of the system and the memory state and all disks involved. So we're going to grab those and if we go back to our backup session, we can actually go to our backup and see that the backup is active. The active backup window will tell us the overall throughput and give us specific individual information of the backup by server. So you'll notice that first off on our throughput we change to a performance tab and on our throughput section we're going to get overall throughput for the entire server and everything we're backing up. So if we're backing up 10 servers here you're going to see the throughput for all 10 servers. We're getting about 83 gigs an hour at the moment and we can define what or it will define what is getting backed up and what the information we have. So as we move forward it will actually update the running tasks on the left as you notice it just did. And those running tasks are broken down by server. So if we had 10 servers we would actually see a new running task by server and we would be able to determine performance by server and how much performance we're getting. So if we have a server that's having an issue we would be able to identify, hey, we have to look at the server, see what it's doing, and go back and fix that one server or change the network, modify its settings to try to boost its performance. Now, if we take a look at the backup, one of the backup is now successful. It's completed. So we're going to go ahead 
and create a restore on the other server. So if we go back over and let's go ahead and take a look at the actual tasks by client, we'll be able to do a restore task on the second Zen server. So we're going to take the server we backed up, we're going to restore it to a separate and different Zen server, and that way we're going to have a second server. We have multiple copies here, we get to select which one we want to restore from, and we're going to do a new target node, because we want it to back up on the other target. We're going to leave it in the same location, but we are going to overwrite existing files. Let's shut the server down so that we don't have two servers with the same name and same authentication information up on the wire. That way we don't have any conflicts. They're also going to come up with the same IP address, so that wouldn't be good. And let's start a restore. It will, by default, restore to the local storage. So if we want to have it restore to a different location, we just set the local, a different storage group as the default store instead of local storage. So we start the task and immediately it creates the server. So it sets up the server, sets up the info for the server config, gets it created, and then starts restoring the entire server. So all of the disks, all the data on there, and we'll have a new server that's set up. The restore window is very similar to the backup window. We'll see the active data. We'll see the total data size at 15.9 gig is the size of the server we're restoring, and we'll see our throughput window down at the bottom. When we do get done, it automatically starts it in a pause state, or I guess it doesn't start it, it sets it up in a pause state, and we're able to then come in, go to the console, start our server, and log in as if it were the original server, since it's just an exact copy of that server. So it's going to come up, have the same info, same login, same IP, same system state information, and it should be fully activated. Obviously, if we had done this with a regular snapshot and then copied it off and restored it, we would actually have it lose that information because it generates new information by default, so it does not keep set up a duplicate server and keep that information. In this case, we wanted it to be exactly duplicate. So instead of us doing additional tasks and reactivating, let's verify that this works successfully. So let's go ahead and go to our computer information. And it says, hey, you did a restart. Let's go to the computer information. Look at our properties. And if we look at the bottom, the activation status is activated. So we're able to keep all the same activation information, do a complete restore, second server in a Zen environment.